Okay, Assalamualaikum and uh, very good morning, very good evening or very good afternoon depending on what time you are watching this video to all my students and now we're going to talk about DC bridge circuit, okay? So go, go on and uh, go ahead, open up the lecture note that I have provided you in ULIN and as a reference for this lecture. Okay, what is a bridge circuit? So a bridge circuit basically looks like this, okay? Looks like this. So basically, it's a circuit which is configured, which is connected with several different resistors uh, in order and used for measuring resistance, inductance, capacitance, and impedances very, very accurately. Okay, before the invent of multi digital, advanced digital multimeter, very accurate multimeter, then this is basically the most uh, useful, most uh, widely used equipment to measure uh, these this, uh, parameters. So basically, bridge circuit has the following characteristic. It has two arm branches parallel to each other, and each branch has two resistors. Okay? For example, for branch A, B, and C, you have basically resistor R1 and R2. And for branch A, D, and C, you have resistor R2 and R4. Okay? And another characteristic is that the circuit are bridged by a third branch. This is a uh, first branch, and this is the middle branch here. Okay, third branch in between B and D, and basically in the middle of the branch, we inserted we insert a null detector, either a galvanometer or a current meter, in order to indicate whether the circuit is balanced or not, the bridge is balanced or not. Okay, and then last but not least, we have a water supply here. It can be a battery. It's placed between node A and C to provide a source of current through the resistance circuit. Okay, so. Um, the current through galvanometer here, the IG here, basically depends on the vo voltage at B and D. Okay, so current in one direction causes the pointer to deflect on one side, and the current in opposite direction in will will deflect on the other side. Okay, if you look at this picture down here, you have a galvanometer. When there is no current, the middle will point in the middle at zero. Once there is a voltage or current, then you either move to the right or to the left, depending on the direction of the current. Okay, so this is what I mentioned before. But zero means that the bridge is balanced. So the bridge is balanced when there is no current. Okay, as mentioned that before. For this reason, a very high degree of accuracy can be achieved using those bridges. Okay, I just show you this picture. Basically, are the categorization of a bridge circuit. So now we are talking in this video, part of the video, that we will talk about DC bridge, uh, and particularly we are going to talk about Wheatstone bridge. Okay, Kevin bridge will cover it in the next video. Okay, there are also uh, AC type of bridge in order to measure inductance, capacitance, and frequency. Okay, so DC bridge basically you want to measure your resistance, and we use AC bridge to measure inductance, capacitance, and also frequency. And we we'll talk about maybe some of the type of bridges later on. Okay, so let's talk about Wheatstone bridge first. Okay, a little bit of history. This uh, Wheatstone bridge is a measuring instrument invented by Samuel Hunter Christie. In 1883, and this Charles, Sir Charles Wheaton, so this is what the name comes from, eh? improvised and popularized by uh, Sir Charles Wheaton in 1843, okay, about 100 over years ago. Okay, it is used to measure an unknown electrical resistance. See, it's the same thing. I measure resistance by balancing two legs of a bridge circuit. One leg of which includes the unknown component. So if you look at this um, old picture here, you can see it looks like a bridge uh, circuit, but uh, you know. Um, this is a very old picture. So, um, okay, so it's officially similar to the original potential meter, except that the potential meter uh, circuit the meter is used to sensitive galvanometer. And until today, the Wheatstone bridge remains the most sensitive and accurate, um, I can say, analog type of uh, measurement for resistance uh, today. Okay, except uh, maybe multimeter can maybe perform much much better. So as I mentioned before. Uh, the Wheatstone bridge is a bridge a circuit which has two parallel resistors with each branch containing two resistors. Okay, we'll talk about that. And then it's used for measuring unknown resistance. Okay, in this case, uh, you have, let's say, four resistors R1, okay, R2, and RT, and R4. So let's say you win, if, we, if, we, if we don't know any one of the resistors and we know all the rest of the three, then we can calculate the the one unknown resistance just using by a simple uh, formula. Okay, and we we'll talk about that after this. Okay, this is just a picture of a portable this digital DC bridge. Yeah? Okay, so let's analyze um, the what you call a balance condition um, and to come up with the expression to relate 
uh, how to calculate the unknown resistance providing you know all other resistors okay so let's talk about uh, so we'll do a voltage divider okay voltage divider so let's take a look at okay we assume that the ground potential is down here so the voltage at this node here is zero at c here is zero okay if we do a voltage divider okay for vr3 the voltage across r3 here okay is equal to the voltage between node d and c node d and c okay is equal to resistor R3, resistance R3 divided by R1 plus R3, R1 plus R3 multiplied by the total voltage between A and C. Okay, so which is Vs here. I can say here is Vs lah, the soft voltage. All right. So similar argument, you can uh, write the same expression for Vr4. This resistance here, this voltage across R4. Okay. And then if we carry out KVL on the lower loop, when I think about lower loop, is this loop here. Okay. If we do KVL. Okay, at first, before I mention that, you, you, you have to draw the current direction in such a way that the I1 is this way. So, once you have the current direction everywhere, and then you mark the polarity. Okay, so if I create a KVL on the lower loop, okay, you start from here, and you will have minus VR3 plus VDB. This is the voltage across galvanometer. You can call it, let's say, VG, and plus VR4. So, VR3 plus VDB. Minus V3 plus VDB plus VR4 is equal to zero. That's KVL for the lower loop. Okay, the lower triangular loop. Okay, so okay, this is very important. For balance condition, we want VDB equal to zero. Okay, so we don't want any voltage across the galvanometer. In if there is a voltage and there will be a current and there will be current, then the meter will deflect right or left. But we want the galvanometer to stay perfectly in the middle. In we want to adhere to be in a balanced condition. Okay, so if we set VDB equal to zero, then this expression will become zero, VDB becomes zero, and if we rearrange the equation, we will find out that the voltage uh, in order for a balanced condition, the voltage across R3 must equal voltage across R4. Okay, all right, so continuing from previously, okay, so we know that this is the expression for the uh, voltage across R3 in R4, okay. So, and we have this equation here. So, we plug in these two equations into this equation. Okay. And we come up with the second one here. All right. So, in here, you can see you can, you can cancel Vs. Okay. Once you cancel Vs, we arrive at this one. Okay. R3 divided by R1 plus R3 equals R4 divided by R2 plus R4. Okay. If you arrange again the equation and we expand the equation, then you can see that we can also eliminate these two. R3 multiplied by R4 and R3 multiplied by R4. And finally, we will arrive at this equation here. R3 multiplied by R2 equals R4 multiplied by R1. Okay? And this is a very, very, very important equation. Only at balanced condition. Always remember. Okay? So it means that the only thing to remember is that for Wheatstone bridge, at balanced condition, the product of resistance of opposite arms are always equal to each other. Okay. It doesn't matter R3 and R2 or R4, R1, depending how you label the resistance. Okay, It can be R A, B, C, D, or X, Y, Z, W, whatever. But as long as you know that the opposite uh, arms, which is, for example, R1, the opposite is here, R4. If R3, then the opposite here is R, R2. Okay, It must always be equal. Okay, So equation states that, uh, you, can, you can also say that, the equation one states that the state the condition for balance of a wisdom bridge and is useful for comp computing the value of an unknown resistor once balance has been achieved. So once we remember this equation, let's say if we want to find R1 and we know R3 and R2 and R4, we can use this equation. Okay. Let's say if you don't know R3, we can use this equation to solve for R3, provided that R2, R4, and R1 are known. Okay? And so on and so forth. Okay. So as I said before, the unknown resistor can be any of the four resistors, eh, depending on your circuit that you will that you want to find. Okay, uh, we can also derive the same uh, the same equation using uh, from current perspective. Okay, let's say for example, uh, at balance condition, we know that VDB equal to zero, and for that VDB equal to zero, automatically we know that the voltage across R1 and the voltage across R2 must be equal to each other. Which is I1, I1 is the voltage across R1, I2, I2 is the voltage across R2. And similarly for the bottom part here. Okay. So and also we know that IG must even at balance condition, we are want to force IG to be zero. 
So if IG is 0, then the current going through R1 must be equal to current going through R3, right? If there's no current going to uh, the, the voltmeter, okay? So similarly with I2 and I4, if I2 is current going here and I4 is current going here, then I2 and I4 must be equal to each other, okay? And that is equal to the voltage, the total voltage in case it's E, or let's say I, want, I can call it is E if I want to, okay, or V or whatever. Okay, divided by the voltage R1 plus R3 for the first branch, eh, for the first arm. For the second arm branch is E divided by R2 plus R4, okay? So, if we substitute 3 and 4 into 1, okay? And then we get this expression and we uh, we can remove E here, okay? And if we rearrange this equation, we will have the same expression that we have discussed before. So, depending on how we analyze the circuit, we can still get the same uh, equation in uh to that relate all the resistors in the bridge in the redstone bridge at balanced condition always always remember this is only applied at balanced condition okay so how to use uh in practical okay once you have this circuit how to use that this uh, redstone bridge for uh for for so we know that r3 plus r multiplied by r2 equals r4 plus r1 so in order to find unknown resistance or unknown resistance, we follow these steps, okay? So in practical, this is a practical steps. So we construct the circuit as shown. I'll be using a breadboard, some resistors. You can connect this easily. It's not very difficult to construct, right? Just some wires and voltage source, okay? okay. And the government meter. So and then we assign only of resistors to become an unknown resistor that you want to measure. Let's say, for example, you want R4, want to measure R4. We don't know. We just pick a resistor. And you put there, you want to know what is actually the resistance. Okay? What's the actual resistance of that particular equipment? Okay? So, and then we assign any of the two remaining resistor to be a fixed or standard resistor. Okay? For example, let's say R1 and R2 are known. And it's a precise resistor. It's a standard resistor. Yes, huh? There's no error in that resistor. Okay? So, and then step number four, we assign the last resistor to be a variable resistor and then we can set at any initial value. Let's say R3. Let's say R3 here. Okay, we set a circle. We can vary between a certain value, a certain range of resistance. Okay. So, and then we now apply a non-voltage source V, a certain voltage, 100 volt, 20 volt, depends. Eh? And then we adjust. And then once we apply the voltage source, we look at this government meter. Okay, initially, the circuit might not be balanced, all right? It's meaning that the R3 might be at a certain voltage, at a certain resistance, and then because it doesn't follow this equation here, and then there will be some current flowing through government meter. So the government might be moved left or right, eh? depending on the initial R3 resistance, okay? All right. So now we apply one, we apply the voltage source, and then in order to, to, to achieve the balance condition, we adjust R3. We just up and down until there's no more movement of the, there's more, no more deflection of the governor meter. And then we record the value of R3. Okay. Once we have recorded the value of R3, then we can calculate the, the unknown value register of R4 using the this formula here. Lah. Okay. So R4 is R3 divided, multiplied by R2 divided by R1. Okay. So that is how we, um, we, can, we can do this experiment in the lab if you want to, but... Uh, I mean, this class is only theoretical. Maybe in your in your lab lesson, maybe you want to do that. So uh, that's all for this part of the video. Next, we're going to continue some explanation of some uh, uh, examples on on uh, questions on solving uh, wisdom bridge. Okay. So thank you very much. I'll see you again after this.